Mapche. Chairman, please allow me to take the next four cuts together. Yes, please. Thank you. At the outset, I would like to declare that I am Chairman of the SNOC's Athletes Commission, Member of the Olympic Council of Asia's Athletes Committee, Honorary Secretary of Olympian Singapore, and Director of Secretariat at the Global Esports Federation. My first cut relates to the development of a skills framework for the sports and fitness industry. It is undeniable that for an industry to grow and thrive, it must be set up in an environment that is conducive for such growth. The necessary conditions must be there for people to want to join the industry and develop it. My question today is, are these conditions present for the sports and fitness industry? And can more be done to facilitate this growth? To my mind, the industry could do well to develop a framework that is competency and skills oriented. Countries like the UK and Australia already have frameworks in place that require employees to hire coaches and fitness trainers who complete specified vocational causes. Further, to get a better sense of the industry's specific needs, the focus should be on engaging the people who do the work daily. The demands of the industry are ever-changing, and it will be a difficult task for, gov for the government machinery to keep pace with the dynamic demands. Say nutrition. There are many fads out there, the keto diet, Atkins, the list goes on. Would HPB be able to keep, uh, to keep coming up with the requisite causes to train people in these areas? The short answer is that it would be difficult and costly. Sports and fitness is a multifaceted industry, and a cookie-cutter approach would be difficult to apply. So considering the industry's needs and the existing infrastructure already in place, I would suggest a skills framework to develop to be developed by the sports industry, for the sports industry, with the full support of the Singapore government. This would lead to a meaningful growth in, in a more cost-effective and targeted way. <laughs> Chairman, my, cut, my second cut relates to the JSS for the sports and fitness sector. In my budget speech, I highlighted that the pandemic has severely hit the sports and fitness and wellness industry. Although Singapore is easing into phase three, sports and fitness academies and establishments are not able to fully open due to social distancing measures. Pool space is reduced, school programs and facilities are limited, and gyms cannot operate, an effective, at, uh, operate to efficient ca capabilities. Also, establishments located in retail facilities still have the added pressure of rental. Some gym operators are reporting as low as 50% revenues compared to pre-COVID levels. Because of this, I would like MCCY to consider upgrading sports and fitness industry from Tier 3 to Tier 2 for GSS support. I would also like to thank Minister and MCCY for recognising the sector and for extending more support to the industry through the Sports Innovation Grant and Operating Grant extension till December 2021. This will complement the GSS. My third cut is, in, is on the development of the esports industry in Singapore. Chairman, it is my pleasure to speak on the emergence and progression of esports in Singapore today. I would like to not only talk about esports through the lens of the future, but also the possibilities for Singapore today, as the future has indeed arrived on our shores. Today, large-scale sports esports tournaments draw more viewers than traditional sports. For instance, the League of Legends World Championship held in Shanghai in late 2020 drew more than 46 million viewers. The world has come to also recognize esports as part of the sports ecosystem. Recently, the Olympic Council of Asia confirmed that the Asian Games would offer a program where esports has a place as a full medal event in 2022. Esports is one of the sectors that has grown rapidly and accelerated during the pandemic. With viewership and gaming participation currently at all-time highs, and in a time where content is king, you can expect esports to be here to stay. The esports industry currently sees double-digit growth, and such growth has found its way into Singapore's landscape. With Singapore's strong local infrastructure and fast and stable internet, top global teams have found Singapore very conducive for their professional team training. There are more than 20 full-time professional players here, with the top 10 having made more than $3 million in prize winnings alone. This figure does not include salaries and sponsorships. 
There are also employed there are also others employed as full-time coaches and managers of local teams, as well as professional teams in major markets like the US and China. Looking ahead, top esports at top esports events in Singapore are expected to spend at least $30 million in 2021. This will boost many local startups and businesses in media events and supporting services. Promising local startups like YupGG and Evos have between them raised more than $31 million in investments, and we can expect many more to follow in their footsteps. They look on track to follow successful local bond companies like C and Razor, who grew a good part of their business thanks to esports and gaming, creating thousands of jobs in the process. Multinational companies in the esports and gaming industry like Tencent, Ubisoft, and Moonton have also set up regional offices here in Singapore. They are expected to introduce hundreds of jobs in the coming year. On the sports administrative front, we welcome to the world the launch of the Global Esports Federation on 16 December 2019 to convene the world's esports ecosystem right here in Singapore. That very same day, we welcome, to the, we welcome the world's largest gaming company and technology giant Tencent as a founding global partner of the GEF. Having Tencent with us has helped propel plans into reality. The vision of Tencent's leadership saw them join the GEF as its very first partner, and in less than a year, to establish its regional hub right here in Singapore. The GEF launch, watched by over 940 million people across the globe, crystallized in our minds the power, potential, and reach of esports around the world. For us at home in Singapore, we saw opportunities. It, it is not gaming and esports alone, but the large, the large growing ecosystem around it. The possibilities and boundless, the possibilities are boundless across education, events, health and wellness initiatives, technology, AI, and innovation. With these developments, I believe Singapore can and should do more to take on a leading role in shaping the industry. Mr. Chairman, my remarks today come with a sense of optimism and opportunity, hope and genuine excitement for the future. I believe the future of esports is incredibly bright. If we gather our knowledge, listen to each other, and help shape the future together. Esports is alive, it is real, and it is evolving in an ever-increasing pace. Indeed, esports can offer the space for everyone, and it makes good business and economic sense. The possibilities are boundless if we seize the opportunities we have been given, which we help create. We intend to host the annual Global Esports Games in December 2021, and every year after that, a rich portfolio of events will fill the calendar with a global platform for competition and entertainment. This event offers another excellent opportunity for Singapore to welcome the world and shape how the world consumes live events. My sincere hope is that Singapore's esports community will grow and prosper and better esports globally to benefit athletes, players, teams, and other stakeholders in our community. Just as the Olympic movement values elevate sports, we hope to highlight and bring out the best in esports. Mr. Chairman, my last cut relates to creating our sporting heritage. In my budget speech, I took the opportunity to recognize our past athletes who had done Singapore proud in times when resources were scarce and inspired generations after them to take on the mantle and fly Singapore's flag high on the world stage. Olympians and national athletes in the earlier decades had to resort to their own resources to help sustain and balance earning a living and competing in sports. Incentive programs such as Major Games Award program was established in the 1990s, which do not confer retrospective recognition. More can be done to recognize and help these athletes who contributed to Singapore's sporting glory and pave the way for future generations to succeed. Currently, there is no system to help keep retired athletes engaged in the national programs, save for Olympian Singapore. I honestly believe that athletes want to continue to give back to their fraternity and inspire Singaporeans. Indeed, when an athlete retires, there is no engagement beyond that. Many athletes have gone on to establish themselves in the corporate and business world. They would likely hire ex-national athletes and sponsor programs. 
they were from the system after all. It is a waste that this is not done. My thoughts are that heritage is closely linked with culture. Just as we reminisce on the glory of the Kalang Roar, we must remain cognizant that youth today may not know what that may means. We have a sports heritage in that the current generations can stand on the past sporting giant's shoulders. I hope MCCY can do more to recognize and engage past athletes.